Hi, my name is Zai, and I've played Quake for over 18 years. The Logitech G910 was a board I stayed away from because of the angled keycaps it came out with. Then at PAX, Logitech showed me that they had updated them for the Orion Spectrum version, and then kindly provided one for review. I've already reviewed the Logitech G810, which was a really nice safe RGB keyboard with media keys. The G910 is the risk taker, and while I like the G810, I'd actually rather the G910. The reason is because I love having extra keys. These take a bit of getting used to, because the button on the left is no longer control, it's G5, but after adjusting, they're great to have. Not everyone wants extra keys though, or a board that has the unnecessary flair in the design. This is the kind of keyboard you pair with a Logitech G900 mouse, because of the alien shapes. Both are great products though. So when choosing a keyboard, I recommend that you find one with the features that you like, and a design that you will find comfortable, eventually. Along with the extra keys, it has a Windows lock key, and it has dedicated media keys too which is something I always want on a board. And unlike some others, these have a sort of cushion feel to them. Not too plasticky or loud. It has a wrist rest which has a detachable top, although I'm not sure why, as there's a frame underneath it that you can't remove. When it's raised, it's actually a bit high and puts the wrist rest on a slightly awkward angle. I think it's best to leave the stands down. It's not quite as comfortable for typing, but better overall. Most of it is made out of matte plastic, but the frame in between the wrist rest is glossy and picks up fingerprints. It's using the Roma G switches, which have a slight tactile bump, and 25% faster actuation, and they are some of the quietest, other than the ping sound. If you're streaming or on voice comms a lot, these are the kinds of switches that you want. Here's a sound test at various typing speeds. Enter, shift and spacebar are all good. They don't tilt side to side and they're not too loud. The media keys are also good, although the volume wheel does lack a bit on quality. But overall the quality feels good, despite all the plastic. I don't know enough about keycaps to talk about durability, but they feel a bit powdery. Kind of mid-range, not the best I've used, but not the worst either. But at least they all have the standard design now, even the ones with the extra design on them. This is what they look like inside. You can't use O-rings with these, but you don't really need to either. The light is inside, and it's a closed board design, so all the light is through the keycap. Personally, I prefer open board designs. They're easy to clean and allow more light out, but this is still good. For dimensions, it's about 50cm long, 21cm wide, and the keycap height is about 3.5 to 4.5cm. So it's a fairly big board. People who don't have the space may want to get the 10 keyless version, but that means you miss out on the extra keys. On the base there are rubber feet, and they should easily prevent it from sliding. Two stands on the back, none on the front, and no cable management. The cable is just on the right side, and it's smooth rubber and about 1.8m long. A braided cable might have looked better, but this one will do the job just fine. And there's no audio or USB on the back. But it does have arcs control for your mobile, if you want to see some real-time stats. And if it gets in the way of the screen, just turn it on its side. In the software, you can rebind the keys. I just have mine set to Steam, Overwatch, and some folders. You can also set keystroke, multi-key, mouse functions, media, hotkeys, and shortcuts like I have, including opening programs as well as folders. And lastly, you have functions. You then have three profiles, in which you can bind them differently. You can also disable keys while in game. In the lighting, it's full RGB, and the transitions are smooth. My favorite is the outward color wave, but you can also set it to fixed color, breathing, star effect, and color cycle. And also key press. In fact, while we're here, let's test how many I can hold down. The answer is, more than I'd ever need to, so all good there. As for gaming, I still maintain that you can play on any board. 
unless you need a heap of macros or something. So of course I can play easily on this one. More importantly, I enjoy using it, and because it's quiet, I can use it all night without waking people up. It's not perfect, but given that it has a wrist thrust, dedicated media keys, extra keys, and the quiet switches, I'd be happy to use this as my main board. They're the features that I look for, but it's up to you what you want. It's currently $185 at M-Wave in Australia. The competition is a bit more than that, so that seems like a fair deal. I'm adding this to my recommendations list, but check out the GA10 if you want a more plain design, along with RGB, media keys, and quiet switches. So it's a great board, I hope to see more with these kinds of features, but maybe without the random trim around the sides. A fully detachable wrist thrust would also be good, and of course, no blue plastic. It should be totally black. Until then, I'm happy with this. If you want to buy one of these and help support the channel, I'll leave some links in the description. Big thanks to Logitech for sending this out for review, and as always, like this video, and I'll catch you in the next. Blue wins the round. Perfect.